Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for March 30th, 2022. So my goodness, as we wind down this quarter, the window dressing of the market and some hopium of maybe some end of aggression on Russia, um, I think there's a lot of skepticism um, that that's actually going to be true. But that being said, we push these markets up into an extremely um, uh, uh, amazingly overextended position here in um, these charts. So with that, how about we settle in, let's buckle up, let's get ready for the hump day edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and I'm going to talk fast again today because I'm running behind this morning. Let's take a look at what's happening here in this market. We have an extraordinary uh, ability of this market recently to um, buy into some really wild-eyed speculation or wide-eyed speculation, um, pushing these indexes into an extreme condition in the market. And we're ignoring some key um, indicators for the market that suggest recession is on the way. And let's keep in mind, as we continue to press and press and press these markets higher and higher and higher, we are really clearing the deck for the Fed to say, nobody cares, let's act really aggressively in the um, rate increases because nobody seems to care. We're just racing back into this market and I think putting um, a lot of traders in some very dangerous positions. Let's take a look at this technically. When we look at the chart, we certainly have pushed through um, resistance levels in the chart, pushing through downtrends and continuing to press up here toward more resistance levels in the chart with virtually no concern to some of the um, some of the market internals out there that suggest that we're likely heading to recession. One of those being right now, if we take a quick look at the bonds, these are the bond rates so far this morning. We have our two year at 2.36 our five year at 2.50 and our five year is inverted over the 10 year at 2.39 and even with our 30 year at 2.50. Now, yesterday for a little bit of time, we actually had the five year inverting over the 30 year. And that usually tells us that we're likely to have a liquidity crisis coming our way and um, a recession could be just around the corner. So kind of keep that in mind as we continue to stretch these charts to the upside. And we'll see in the T2122 indicator coming up just how extended we are. If we take a look at the SPY, SPY certainly very extended in the short term. The straight up move adds so much danger to the market. And I fear that there are a lot of folks that have chased into this um, thinking that there is nothing to be worried about. And I think they're going to be very disappointed when the reversal does occur because I think it could be really, really painful. Now, breaking through this resistance in the chart in that overextension of the market, we're certainly showing lots and lots of willingness to buy uh, um, without much regard to the danger that could exist if the market does find a reason to pull back. So just kind of keep that in mind here in the market, you might want to be starting to think about some profits um, in um, these charts because mm, rarely do we go straight back up. And then let's take a look at our QQQ. QQQ pushing back up. Now QQQ has had a little bit more of a struggle getting um, back to the upside, but the last few days has just been a remarkable um, rush into big tech, stretching and stretching and stretching into price resistance levels here in the chart that I honestly didn't expect we could just slice right back through. Now that being said, we're going to have to watch this really closely because this is a parabolic move to the upside, almost straight up, which puts us in a dangerous situation if a pullback were to come. You could imagine if the selling starts, everyone will run for the doors at the same time, making for a painful potential sell-off in the market. And then, of course, IWM. IWM really kind of surprised me yesterday. Uh, pulled back early on after those pop and drops that we had in the morning and continued to push up at the end of the day, pressing into those resistance levels of that year, nearly a year 
uh, years worth of resistance in the chart. So let's watch that closely. We're right at that point at price resistance where we could see the Russell begin to pull back. So watch that close. Let's take a look at our VIX. Now our VIX just continues to decline. There seems to be no fear in this extension to the upside, and that makes me very nervous. That's where that wide-eyed speculation comes in, that we got this impression that there's nothing out there to be worried about. And I gotta tell you guys, the internals of the market don't suggest that. As a matter of fact, it suggests the exact opposite. And as we continue to push this up, it really, um, leaves the Fed an open door to act extremely aggressively um, because there's just no reason if, if the market doesn't care, let's just start working on inflation hard. So watch that carefully as we continue to push down. Um, kind of surprising pushing below the 20 handle here in the chart with no fear. When we start seeing that, that uh, move in the market that says we just don't care, that's when the big whipsaw can uh, occur. So just watch carefully in case it does start. It could be a painful pullback if it does begin. Let's take a look at our T2122. And this is where we see that real extreme extension in the market. T2122 has a possibility of 100. That's where this tops out. Um, it can't go past 100. Um, and as you can see, we closed the day at 99.3. Three, five, an extreme overextension in um, our T2122, suggesting that if the sell-off does begin, it could be very painful for those that rushed in um, yesterday and or, or at the last minute here in the market. So watch that pretty closely as we continue to push up. Keeping in mind, guys, that we had some uh, news that um, the um, Chinese, uh, excuse me, the Japanese yen is declining very rapidly, creating some problems over there. We had kind of a mixed reaction um, over there with that, and also a 10% slide in the Evergrande car unit, um, creating some pressure in Asian markets and um, European markets uh, with some heavy skepticism that Russia is not going to back off as they seem to have pledged. Um, is negative on the day. So we have that possibility of, of the setup here this morning where we could begin to see those bears coming back. And I fear that they may come back really, really strong because of this overextension. If we take a look at our T2108, T2108 had a huge improvement yesterday as we extended up. And let's take a look here. We peaked right out over that downtrend just a tiny little bit, um, trying to push back through. So um, just a straight up parabolic move here in that chart. But we're finally up there testing that downtrend overall in T2108. Um, massive improvement yesterday in that, which once again points to that extreme extension in the short term. T2107, very much the same um, in the sense that we pushed up very sharply, again, parabolic in the short term move to the upside, pushing into that downtrend. And notice we just ever so slightly tried to peek out of that um, long term downtrend. Big improvement, 41% of the stocks holding above their 200 day moving average but we're right at that reversal point um, with an with a really amazing extension in the short term and our t2101 kind of an interesting situation where we're continuing to rally on very light volumes which is leaving t2101 um, trying to figure out what's going on here and um, i'm not sure we're getting any really good indications from the t2101 in indicator um, it's it's a, probably about as confused as i am right now as we continue to blindly run to the upside let's take a look at our um, economic calendar for today now our economic calendar we do have some things on here that could create some volatility this morning. Let's keep in mind we've got the ADP report. We know jobs have been really, really strong. That's likely to remain strong as we get those um, ADP numbers out this morning. And then we're going to run right into this GDP number. Now, GDP is suggesting a very hot number, over 7% on GDP. 
Um, that could be seen in a couple different ways. Possibly the bulls will see that as, oh my gosh, look at this. We're just roaring. The, the economy is roaring, but all the market indicator in internal indicators suggest that is not the case. So it may be seen as being hot. And if it comes in or if the impression that the market gets that that is overheating, then there could be a situation where the bears engage on that number. So watch that close. Then we've got the petroleum status numbers here later on this afternoon. We'll want to keep an eye on that. We've got a couple of Fed speakers that we'll, we will also want to keep an eye on. Keep in mind, we've got an OPEC meeting coming up here on Thursday. We'll want to watch that. We've got jobless claims, personal incomes and outlays, um, Chicago PMI, and a natural gas report on um, Thursday um, with the Fed balance sheet later in the day, which we don't seem to react to at all anymore. So keep an eye on that. Then remember, as we progress here, we've got that employment situation number coming in on Friday. Let's take a look at um, our earnings calendar for today. Now, our earnings calendar, we have uh, over 70 companies um, on that calendar, but unfortunately, a great number of them are unconfirmed reports. And honestly, quite a few of them that are notable reports are such a small cap um, type um, stock that it's unlikely to have you know any major effect on the market at all today so let's take a look at a couple of them that are more notable and I'm going to do this really quick if you want to click uh, get the full list make sure you click that link just below the title of the video that'll take you back to the morning blog and you can get the full list um, five below I below reporting this morning. We'll want to keep an eye on this one. This is one of the more notables of the day. Looks like they're having a little bit of a problem here this morning after its report, continuing in its downtrend um, at the moment. And PAYX. PAYX, one of the more notables today, and looks like they're getting some bullish action after their report this morning. Pushing back up here, looks like we're going to be trying to test this um, all-time high here in PAYX and see if it can uh, break out. A little bit of a pop and drop going on in the pre-market on that symbol, so keep that in mind. So with that, guys, how about we take a look at some stocks that could be setting up, and before we... Um, do that if you can do me that quick favor if this is the first time you've seen these videos make sure you click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video and if you find these videos to be worthy to be helpful please do me that favor click those thumbs up buttons leave a brief comment that helps the channel to continue to grow and thank you so much to everyone who does take the time to do that you guys are awesome I truly appreciate it I, 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 you know, I, I take the time to answer and read all of those comments because the, it is very important to me. Thank you so much for everyone who does. And for those that continue to support the channel through Buy Me a Coffee, you guys are truly awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your kind support to um, the content of this channel. I do truly appreciate it. Let's take a look at some of these stocks setting up. And remember, guys, these are not uh, recommendations to buy or sell any security. As a matter of fact, make sure you're doing your own due diligence. Make sure you're focusing very carefully on the risk that you're taking in these trades. Never ever blindly follow anyone else's trade idea. Make sure you make them their your own. Let's take a look at a couple of these. TSCO, Tractor Supply. As you guys know, I've mentioned this one a couple of times and I'm watching this one closely as food prices continue to move up and story after story of potential food shortages coming soon. We'll want to watch this pretty closely because I think there is that chance that kind of the urban farming situation may continue to get stronger and stronger here um, and tractor supply is well positioned for that. So we had this nice little consolidation in here, a lot of bouncing around in that little range and I'm watching for that opportunity that this could gain some ground and maybe pop through there to the upside and maybe challenge some of these 
all-time highs and maybe move on higher from there. So keep an eye on tractor supply. Um, you might also want to keep an eye on that CRM. Now I've mentioned this one several times before and you know that I had that price alert in here on that chart and um, CRM pushing through to the upside, getting some bullishness going there in uh, that chart. So watch that closely. And this happens to be one of those rounded bottom breakout patterns in charts that usually perform pretty darn well. Now, one of the things we do have to consider, even though we've got a great um, a great um, pattern in here, if the market responds negatively to the overextension here in the indexes, all stocks could pull back. So be kind of careful in over trading stocks to the upside um, as we continue this extension um, and really set up a pretty substantial pullback in the market. Let's take a look at a few others here that look just pretty darn good. Take a look at um, um, SQ. SQ making that move out of that nice little pattern here again, once again, more of that rounded bottom breakout pattern, pushing on up in a very nice uh, pattern to the upside, looking strong here on SQ. Keep an eye on that. You might want to be keeping an eye on some of the cannabis stocks. Um, there's news out um, that Congress is taking up um, the challenge of maybe legalizing cannabis and um, we can see that we've had a recent pretty sharp move here on stocks like Crone moving up and today there is a committee meeting on this and in the house about that legalization so watch that carefully Crone moving um, trying to break through these downtrends and starting to look much more bullish TLRY whoops TLRY is another one that's breaking through some resistance levels, looking quite strong, moving to the upside. You can even look to like um, MJ, which is a ETF on cannabis. Also, as you can see, working to break through some resistance in the chart, showing some bullishness here. So keep an eye on that. That will be in the news likely today. You'll want to watch that closely. Other places that I think you might want to look, it was pretty interesting yesterday where, where we saw energy gapping lower but we rejected that low, um, that pushback yesterday with all the energy stocks surging back to the upside um, after that rejection um, to, to that move. So watch that closely as we're seeing Brent crude prices moving up again this morning. And then also taking a look at some of those commodity type stocks. Take a look at um, um, Mosaic. Um, and mosaic is one of those areas when ag and fertilizer and things like that we gapped down yesterday morning surging back here on the day holding some support in here um, I think we probably have that um, likely opportunity that these commodity prices will continue to move higher also saw the same kind of moves in gold gold gapped down yesterday but surged right back starting to show that little bit of willingness to hold on to some price support I wouldn't say it's ready for a prime time move here just yet and that's just simply because we still have that little downtrend that we could react to but if we can pop through up here and hold I would certainly keep an eye on some of these commodity prices as we're seeing the yen weaken. Um, yesterday we saw a pretty substantial weakening um, in um, the US dollar um, where we gapped down and we're moving lower again today. If US dollar begins to weaken here, we'll want to watch that closely because that could continue to help these uh, prices move up. And then take a look at the miners out there, uh, GDX. And GDX nice bullish engulfing candle yesterday after that gap down open rejecting the low pushing back up um, seeing a lot of the mining stocks another bullish engulfing candle coming in here on newmont mining almost what you'd call a belt hold pattern in the chart holding on to this trend and showing that bullishness maybe pushing on through today so keep an eye on some of those miners they are also pushing up pretty strongly if you're looking for stocks that are showing some um, some bearishness some uh, maybe some overextensions take a look at some of the um, uh, high-flying 
um, tech stocks, they may be poised for some pullback. And another place that you might want to look is the financials. Although we have rates going up, we're seeing financials struggle here in uh, just a little bit. Take a look at like Citibank. Citibank continuing to, to struggle in here. JP Morgan continuing to uh, struggle, possibly setting up for some short trades. Also seeing like BAC showing quite a little bit of weakness yesterday as those rates move up and those bonds move up, showing some pressure and maybe that liquidity problem here on banks. Remember, why would you want to loan on a 30 year um, 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 home loan when you can get as good or better return by buying five-year treasuries. So kind of keep an eye on that. Let's take a look at, um, well, I guess that's it. Let's um, remember today, guys, that well, there could be some volati volatility around the morning open because of those um, ADP and GDP numbers. Be safe, be careful, have an awesome, awesome day. I wish you all the very, very best, and we'll see you right back here bright and early Thursday morning. Take care, everyone.